All right, Mayor, so this is the bonus segment of Macro Musings. I'm just delighted to have you on and thank you for taking additional time out to join me. So thank where you so are you right now? Me. I'm in um, San Clemente, California, um, home of the Nixon uh, White House in the West Coast uh, back in the 70s. So it's, it's Southern California, close to the ocean. It's, it's not bad. You got pleasant weather right now? It is uh, 85 degrees outside right now and sunny. Wow, wow. So yeah. are you able to get outside and enjoy it or are you locked in a lot? I did, I, I'm a runner and so I've been nice. running on the beach but they did close the beaches. I think people weren't paying attention to the, to the rules and so unfortunately that, that option went away but I was able to run outside on the road today. So yes, I am. Oh, very nice. Now you're in California but I know from your uh, Vita that you used to be at the University of Georgia and I graduated from Go the Dogs. University. Of, that's yeah. right. I graduated from the University of Georgia. So I'm I'm wondering, are you a, a diehard Georgia Bulldog fan, or do you have some other allegiance somewhere else for another college team? I I don't know anything about football. I reluctantly, or I guess happily, learned the rules, but they didn't really stick. Um, I had to know who won the game in order to. So for my one L's to not laugh me out of the classroom. Um, and I used several football hypo hypotheticals in my, in my classes, but um, I am a Bulldog fan. I have no other allegiances, but um, I loved, I loved Athens. I loved UGA. Uh, it is such a great place. I don't know if you, what your experience was like. But oh, Athens I had a great such, time there. Yeah, yeah, it was, a lovely town. it was a great experience yeah. there for sure. Yeah. yeah. So speaking of one L, that's the first year of law school, and you hear all these yes. horror stories about it. There's the famous book, and then maybe there's the, maybe the movies or the TV show yeah. about it. So, what has that been like? Now, you don't teach that though. Now, do you here at um, this this year? I did not, but next year okay. I will go back into teaching it. Yeah, so I teach but, contracts and property for one L. Okay, so I'm just wondering, you know, this legendary class for for students, you know, they they're fearful, they they mm -hmm. they shake in their boots walking in there. I wonder what the Zoom experience has been like for them having to do it. Maybe it's easier, do you think, or maybe tougher? What What are your thoughts? I know yeah, you're not teaching, you, but I, I'm not, and and I've I've been talking to some colleagues, and I, I think you know there are ways to do it. Um, on Zoom, but you have to just kind of do it differently. Um, part of the fun in the classroom is actually just reading faces and seeing your students. You know, I, I find in the classroom, I teach about 70 students, but I can see all their faces. So I can kind of read confusion. I can read where, um, you know, the, the half the class sort of gets it and the other doesn't. And so you can slow down or speed up depending on that. And I can't imagine uh, what that's like. I teach a banking law class now and I can see all their faces. There's only like 10 of them. It's a seminar. And we've been talking about monetary policy and sort of COVID related stuff recently. So it's been kind of an amazing teaching experience because the day, you know, that we did like stress testing, the Fed came out with their new stress test. The day we did monetary policy emergency powers, the Fed just released there. So for me, this semester has been just like an amazing uh, hypothetical real world. Okay, so you're having a great experience teaching. Mm -hmm. Now you're also having to work from home, as you mentioned via mm -hmm. Zoom. So what's it like working from home? Do you have a particular place in your house where you, you study do you, or work? Do you move around different desks? Do you compete with your, your spouse, your kids for prime okay. real estate for work? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's a struggle. Um, my kids are at the ages where they can be entertained with any device at all at all times of the day. So Minecraft or whatever. So whenever I have a call or my spouse has a call, we just kind of give them devices and tell them to go. Um, so that's been great. Um, I was in the basement. Um, I have this little basement here that doesn't have a window uh, as my office. And because I was spending so much time there, it was really depressing. So my <laughs> husband actually, for my for my birthday, built me a little desk. This is our bedroom, but it's got a window. And so I just kind of lock the door and I have this little desk built into a wall. And so this is my new space. And because I'm spending so much time here, it's actually really pleasant. <laughs> oh, good. And it's got a lock. So that's the extra bonus. <laughs> keep, keep the kids out. Yeah, here I got to keep the kids out and the dog out too sometimes. The, uh, the pet yeah, will come yeah. in here and make noise if I'm not careful. So let's play a game here. You are now president of the United States. Something dramatic has happened. We won't go into the details, but you're now president of the United States and you have to pick mm -hmm. an economic team to help guide us through this crisis. So mm -hmm. you're in charge. And what I want you to do is to pick 
let's say three to five people from Twitter that you follow, when I will do the same. And, and to people who are watching this, you know, no fi hard feelings. Someone's going to have to make the cut. This is kind of like The Voice or American <laughs> Idol. There's lots yeah. of great people on Twitter who probably make this team. Yeah. But uh, if you had to pick an economic team based on who you follow on Twitter, do you have any names you'd like to go with? Yes. Okay. I would go um, uh, with Mike Consul, um, who's a colleague of mine from uh, Roosevelt. Um, I really love his, his Fed work, and I think just put him in charge of Fed monetary policy type stuff. Um, I would pick um, Trayvon Logan, who um, is at, I think, OSU now. He's an economist, focuses on um, racial wealth gap issues, racial health issues, and I think he would bring really great insight into um, these sort of racial issues. And then Claudia Sam, who I know has been a, a former guest of yours, who yep. uh, I think has some great wisdom on uh, inequality issues and, and, and some of that stuff. So that would be my three, no offense to others. I have a lot of other people, but just three economists, that's it. Okay, so I will stick to three as well. I, I had five, but I'll stick, I'll do three since you did three. And again, to all the uh, listeners out there, I, I love you too, but yeah. <laughs> it, someone has to take the cut here. So yeah. I would uh, go with George Selgin, because he oh, knows yeah. a lot mm -hmm. about the operating system of the Federal Reserve. Mm -hmm. And right now it's gotten really complicated. Mm -hmm. So someone needs to think about huge balance sheets and the interaction mm -hmm. between Central Bank and Treasury. Mm -hmm. I would go with Gita Gopinath, if I'm saying her name correctly. She is the chief economist for the IMF. And mm -hmm. I'd go with her because she has a great sense of the global economy. And uh, huh. I think right now, Another big thing is the dollar funding crisis. I talked about with Brad Setzer recently, but she's really good on that. A lot of interesting research, so I'd love to have her on my team. Mm -hmm. And then finally, the, the third person I would pick would be Ramin Tului. Mm -hmm. And Ramin Tului um, used to be my boss at Treasury, but he was the, uh, like the Assistant Secretary for International Affairs. He also worked at PIMCO. So he's a real kind of, he's down in the trench type policymaker. So those three, I feel very confident, help guiding us through the, uh, the future. So I'll stop there. Uh -huh. I, yeah. And again, to everybody else, I still love you, and I'm, I'm yeah. sure you do too. Same comment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We play we play these games every night at my house. Like three people that you could quarantine with, living or alive. <laughs> yes. And we kind of, you know, we have every night just a random assortment of yeah, good and bad scenarios that we do. So yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much for taking time out thank today you. for being with us. Thank you All so right. much for having me. This was really fun. It was. Take care. Thank you.